Hey everyone, welcome to another meeting of the Gentleman Scholars Club. Today we're taking a look at the field jackets from Spear and McKay, and we have two representations of that here. We have a natural linen, and we have a uh, navy blue linen with a glencheck pattern on it. So in terms of uh, field jackets, Spear and McKay first started offering them in 2020 in their autumn winter collection. And it was quite interesting to me at the time because uh, my wife and I were traveling a lot and well in 2019 and we usually go to gardens we go to uh, parks we take drives in the country and i used to wear sport coats for these occasions or i would wear something like a barber jacket and one of them being a little bit too dressed down for me the other one being too dressed up so i was looking for something in the sweet spot in the middle and i thought safari jackets and field jackets would sort of fit that bill i didn't pull the trigger immediately on a purchase from Spear and McKay because I wasn't 100% sure. I was also trying to figure out color combinations and whether my other clothes, my wardrobe would coordinate with a field jacket. And so when I was ready, uh, it turned out that my size was gone um, and they sold quite quickly. Price was pretty good, um, $228 for a jacket, half, roughly half or um, a third less than a tailored jacket, let's say. And so when these came out in warmer weather fabrics, in the spring of 2021, really wanted to get them immediately. I didn't hesitate, didn't wait for a sale, which I was sort of doing in the autumn, and I bought them to try them out. They're offering currently six different colors. They have uh, this uh, blue with a uh, glencheck pattern, natural linen, there's a moss green, there's a rust, there's a black, and there's a solid navy, and I think that covers it. If I miss something, then check the website. Um, Black looked pretty interesting as well. Not something I might wear in the summer, but has quite a nice look to it. So check that out as well, in addition to what we talk about here today. So without further ado, let's try on the um, natural linen, see how it fits and its features. So in actuality, this is more beige than it looks on the camera. I think on the screen there, it appears to be whitish, but it's more like a, a warm white It has Touches of brown in it, some brown tones, and I would prefer to have any type of neutral jacket containing brown tones or gray tones rather than yellow tones. If it's yellow and it goes toward cream, and that's usually the way they describe it, they contain a lot of yellow, uh, I find them to be harder to match with what I wear and more, also more aggressive. Something like this, which has brown tones or gray tones in it, uh, you can easily match with more things. Um, I'm wearing today a blue sky blue stripe linen from Belisario. I have on dark brown trousers from Berg & Berg. These are their um, Arnold fit, I believe, uh, single pleat. And you can wear this with navy blue with a blue shirt, navy blue trousers and a blue shirt. You can wear them with a white shirt and kind of mid-brown trousers. You can wear them with tobacco linen trousers, a number of different combinations. Once you have that neutral off-white, you can do tons with it. Uh, you can wear white trousers with it and a blue shirt, many possibilities, and that's why I really like it. But like I said, it can be difficult to find the right color. Uh, so Spear McKay did well with this. This is a size medium, which is uh, 38 on the label, and um, it fits quite well. Uh, pockets are not too, trying to get them lined up there. Uh, pockets are not too bulgy, which is something I dislike in safari type jackets. If the pockets look huge here, kind of undermines the appeal. It's too, too aggressive a look. Uh, these pockets are matching at the bottom. You have uh, button pockets here with a flap. Sometimes you can find these with patch pockets at the bottom. So un, uh, asymmetrical type pockets, both are fine, but this looks nice with the symmetry. Typical safari type jackets, you have uh, five buttons. So you usually have four or five buttons on the jacket here, and there they are. Inside, you've got multiple pockets. Uh, you've got a small pen slot here, which you can just stick a pen in there, I presume. You've got the uh, latch on there, which you can open up and uh, stick something in, like a passport, keep it safe and secure. You've got two extra buttons there, and another pocket here, which you can probably put your phone into. And then at the bottom, below the... Uh, below the flap here, you've got uh, an additional pocket with a button. So ample storage. And again, I wouldn't stuff the outside with too many things. I'd rather use the inside. 
Uh, certainly you can put a passport in here, a notebook, and put your phone in there, but I wouldn't do it because even though it's highly functional, it kind of ruins the appearance. Um, and there's some guys who say they never use the front pockets of their trousers for the same reason. Large wallet in there, you got keys in there, ruins the overall cut and effect. So I wouldn't do that necessarily, but you got ample storage on the inside. Also on the inside, you've got a, a drawstring or a draw cord, and this is made out of kind of a, looks like a cotton material. And there's a, a tab, a piece of wood or plastic with two holes in it. And you can adjust the length of the cord accordingly to cinch in the sides, right? If you want to create more waist suppression and kind of give you that sort of shape at your sides, you just pull the cord and adjust it, lock it down, and uh, it creates that look. Uh, the thing about safari jackets that I quibble with, and it's also true of the Spear McKay field jacket, is the placement of the buttons. So where do you close this is always my question. If you choose to close it over here, uh, it might be fine, but it looks a little too high in terms of where you would button. The buttoning point is too high. And so you might want to go down here. And if you do that, though, it still looks too low. I think it's a little bit better than up here, but nonetheless, I feel this is too low. And this is, again, not unique to Spear McKay. I find this to be true of most safari jackets. Uh, I would actually recommend uh, putting a button there, kind of in between the two, which is similar to where it would be on a sport coat, I believe. And that gives you that sort of balance in terms of top and bottom where you close the jacket if you do a single button. Now, it might be my personal thing, personal observation of bias, but that's where I would prefer to see it rather than here or here can be tricky because, again, you're dealing with four or five buttons and you have to get them then aligned, spaced out right, and so on. But that would be something I would recommend the manufacturer uh, or companies or tailors to think about when uh, putting together safari jackets or field jackets. Uh, with the cinching as well on the side, you'll get some of what I call warm trails, where because the fabric is being cinched, it's being compressed, uh, you see kind of where the cord is kind of unavoidable unless the fabric is really thick. Even then, I think you'd still see it. Um, but um, it's also kind of low, in my opinion. I would recommend putting the draw cord a little bit higher, like up here, up here, right? So then when you're standing, you're bringing it in at that point rather than down toward the hips. Again, it might be my personal thing, but another recommendation, how high or how low to place a draw cord. Those quibbles aside, this is quite a nice jacket, um, as I think you can see from the video. Second jacket is uh, navy blue or blue um, with a Glen check pattern on it. And I was interested in this because I own a ring jacket sport coat that has, it's, it's mid blue and it has a Prince of, Prince of Wales check. So it has a navy, a navy pattern on it, a navy plaid, and then over that it has kind of a electricish blue Prince of Wales over check. And um, I really like that. It's one of my favorite jackets. So I wanted to kind of emulate that in a more casual version, which would be this. So this one is OK. Uh, not entirely happy with it for one reason, is that the pattern is not obvious enough. And Spear McKay may have decided on that to make the item more saleable. Maybe if the patterns are stronger, people won't buy them as much. But I would have liked to have seen the pattern, the Glen check, pop against the base color a little bit more. I don't even know if you can see the pattern there unless I come really close to the camera. Now, even there, I don't know if it's highly visible. You can see some modicum of the Glen check. So I would have liked to have seen it pop a little bit more. Uh, the fit is also a bit more loose in the sleeves. I understand it's linen, but it feels like it has more slack in the sleeves. So it could be altered by tailoring. Um, but like the natural linen much more, than this color um, and this pattern. But it's also quite solid and um, has a number of redeeming features for summer wear. The uh, last thing I will mention is I do like the way these lapels sort of stand up. I think you can call these lapels still. Um, and if, if you uh, walk around, you have that sort of protrusion, which is a, a nice touch on the fabric. You can also pop the collar for sure and wear it that way, though I wouldn't probably do that too often. It has that kind of appearance of trying hard to look a certain way. So I, would, I wouldn't do that, even though I do like to pop my pea coat or bridge coat lapel or collar. So there you have it, uh, Spear and McKay field jackets. 
I recommend them. Good price. Not getting paid to, to I'm not getting any money for this. I'm not getting the jackets for free. Paid regular price, and completely unsolicited review. I have nothing to gain from this. I, I do like them. Uh, there are certain things that I would change if I were doing something bespoke, or made to measure, made to order. But uh, overall, nice item to have if you want to walk in a garden, drive down the California coast on the Pacific Coast Highway, um, walk in a, walk in the woods, or make a run to the supermarket in the morning in New York or something like that. Thanks for watching. Uh, like the video. Feel free to offer comments, uh, ideas after you've seen it. And subscribe to us at the Gentleman Scholars Club for more similar videos with brand reviews, advice on style, and discussion of classic menswear in general. Thanks for watching.